Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 7126 Battle Droid Carrier, a set that feels like a battle pack before battle packs existed, having released in 2001, six years before the first battle pack would release in 2007. Part of why it feels like a battle pack is because it was only $10 with 133 pieces and included seven total battle droids, but another reason is because it paired perfectly with the MTT from the year prior, allowing you to add more battle droids to that set, and the troop holder on the carrier was even compatible with that MTT, you just had to remove the antennas on top to be able to slide it in. Now for as great of a pairing as those two sets were, I was a bit surprised that throughout all of the packaging and even on the inside with all of the advertisements and the instruction manual, nowhere does it advertise that these two sets should go together. I feel like it was a missed upsell that you easily could have put in any of your marketing here. Moving right into our minifigures, things are quite simple here. You had seven total battle droids, which technically according to Lego aren't true minifigures, but six of them were regular battle droids with bent arms for both arms as the straight arm was not introduced until 2007. Of course, for the price, $10 at the time, about $17.50 in today's money adjusted for inflation, getting six regular battle droids is excellent. And looking back at it, this was probably the most efficient way to build a straight up B1 battle droid army ever. All of them, of course, came with the big megaphone blasters, and I mean, they're battle droids. They're pretty timeless, of course. The other battle droid here is the pilot battle droid. They gave him a blueprint on his torso. This wasn't the first battle droid to receive printing on the torso, as that goes to the battle droid commander from the year prior, but this one is still still very good. In case you were curious, he doesn't have any printing on the back or anything. It's just the front of the torso. He includes zero weapons. He is simply here to pilot the droid carrier. So we can take our pilot battle droid and we can place him inside of the battle droid carrier. There's just some studs for him to stand on. And it's a little bit awkward sometimes to get him to attach to those studs. But in this case, it was a little bit easier. Uh, the reason it's awkward is it's just a weird space to work into because this front section doesn't really move. Like it's not made to flip open in any way. So you just kind of have to work around it, which, which kind of sucks. Like you can pull the whole thing off if you want, but like... Obviously, that's not the intention. Now, this brown piece on the very front has a really nice print. Looks like it's got some ventilation, maybe for some airflow going through. But either way, the design works nicely and certainly adds to this set. And again, it's printed 2001, a $10 set. And we've got a printed piece, undoubtedly modern day. This would be a sticker. So that's a huge quality thing there for Lego back in the day. That's amazing. Directly behind where the pilot is, we kind of have this empty space here. Nothing is really done with this space. You could fill it in with more battle droids or some crates or something, but there is just an empty two by four space there that you could do what you want with. Now on one of the pieces is this light clipped on. You can move it up or down as you please. And just because of the box, I actually always thought this piece was orange. And if you look on the box art, it undoubtedly looks orange, although not the same exact orange as the orange for the blaster stud, but they also make other studs in a toned down orange color. So that's what I always thought this piece on here was. But I realized looking in the very back of the instruction manual that it actually is supposed to be a translucent stud piece and that the box just has completely oversaturated that piece and therefore it looks orange. It's actually kind of crazy to see the color difference. So in my head, this part forever was orange, but is officially supposed to be translucent clear. So just the more you know, I guess you learn something new every day. Now, of course, the main point of this build is to carry battle droids, and that is what the entire back section is good for. And while these studs will remain unused throughout this video, they are again a place where you could place more battle droids droids or more accessories or things. It is otherwise just empty, unused space. So we have this piece here that slides right out from the back of the carrier. This again is what can fit inside of the larger MTT as long as you go ahead and remove the antenna pieces, which I don't really need to do here because I'm not putting it in the MTT. I just want to put battle droids on it. In case you need to know, this is what the battle droid carrier looks like with nothing in it. And that is the bottom side of the droid carrier. It does have the inverted tiles so that it can uh, move smoothly along most surfaces, which is definitely a nice thing. You see that on a lot of Lego sets from this era and onward. Now, when it comes to actually placing a battle droid on here it can be a bit of an awkward process you have to bend him down and then move his head like all the way back like that it looks super awkward when he's not actually attached but we'll go ahead and try to get him attached just like that. So his hands will clip in. His feet don't really attach to the studs. They kind of just touch them and go around them. So it's not like a complete attachment like you would think of normally. And I'm pretty sure there's not really a way to contort that to make it work since, you know, this piece obviously blocks it from being a straight up connection. So it's not supposed to connect anyway, but just so you know, it doesn't connect. It can be a bit of a process to get them all on there, but I think with all six on there, it looks quite cool and definitely makes it look like you have a real army ready to transport. Now, 
Now, you of course still have your blasters for each of the battle droids, and while you could really place them anywhere, they're intended to go on these three studs on each side for the six total. Obviously, the classic look is something to love, but another thing I really liked about these older megaphone blasters is just how easy you could really set them down anywhere like this. It was just really simple for Lego to make a spot and then you could come along and attach your blasters onto it and be ready to transport them like without having to have any extra special pieces that you know you inserted the end of the blaster into to hold it like it just attaches anywhere. So if you didn't notice the rail system in place there it is and so you'll just slide it right on into the battle droid carrier and they're ready to be transported. It's just that simple. It really is that kind of place that it does what you would want it to do. It includes the minifigs you would want, and at what at the time was an affordable price, I would not recommend buying this today. Sealed in box, it's between $100, $150. It's just not something that makes a lot of sense unless you're a really hardcore collector or have a real sentimental attachment to this set. I think it's an easy one to pass up, but it's a phenomenal set for its time and ahead of its time almost in the way that it combined with the MTT. So I think that is a real pro to this set from 2001. So let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments section below i'm giving it i mean this is essentially a 10 out of 10 for 2001 i mean it's about as perfect as it gets at the time nothing could have really been better on this but i find it a little annoying to attach the battle droids so we'll dock at half a point 9.5 out of 10 final score anyway that's all for my review of this classic lego star wars set you can check out more 2001 set reviews on the end screen now <laughs>